Good morning and welcome to our service of communion for Ascension Tide. It's good to be gathered together online with you and to celebrate this feast together. Uh, I hope you've managed to download the order of service to follow, which is available on our Dropbox. If you haven't yet, perhaps you can do so during our first hymn. It is available via our website and on our Dropbox link. So we begin by singing together that wonderful opening hymn of praise, Christ Triumphant. Christ. The Lord be with you and also with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So we say together our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. What God has prepared for those who love him, he has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything. Therefore, let us in penitence open our hearts to the Lord, who has prepared good things for those who love him. Lord Jesus, you suffered a cruel death on the cross for our redemption. Yet we have forgotten your pain 
and stayed in the realm of the evil you defeated. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you were raised from death to bring us new life, yet we have preferred the comfort of the familiar and the empty promises of a sinful world. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have ascended to your Father and our Father, to your God and our God. Plead there at the right hand of God for our forgiveness and entry into the fullness of his presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. So on this festival celebration, let us say together the words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Our collect for today. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. We beseech you, leave us not comfortless, but send your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to the place where our Saviour Christ is gone before, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now hear our first reading from the book of Acts, that wonderful story of Jesus's ascension. The first reading is taken from Acts chapter 1 verses 6 to 14. So when they had come together they asked him, Lord is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
we now hear our gospel reading, after which John will bring us his sermon for today. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Alleluia. He has defeated the powers of death. Alleluia. Jesus turns our sorrow into dancing. Alleluia. He has the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God. And Jesus Christ, whom you have sent, glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so they may be one as we are one. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. goodbyes are tough. I remember several times in my life saying goodbyes to dear friends as we're about to move. Often friends will exchange promises to keep in touch across the distance, though I seldom do. And I'm not very good in keeping contact with people. Don't be a stranger, I will say, and then I do. Some of us have tough goodbyes and perhaps you too have had some tough goodbyes, maybe even the death of a loved one. Then you know that this side of heaven you will never see the person again. Such goodbyes can be filled with regrets of things left undone and unsaid. We may, we may just wish that we had more time together. And times are hard. You would think that the disciples, when they realised Jesus had departed, would also struggle with the goodbye. Here they've spent three years with him, day in, day out. They've given up much to follow him. They have grown to love him. It all seemed to come crashing down when Jesus was crucified and they scattered in fear. But then came a joyful reunion. Many reunions actually, as Jesus had risen from the dead and he proved it to them convincingly. He died and now he was alive. And right away, he was leaving again. If I was one of those disciples, I'd find it hard not to be disappointed, to be dejected and distraught the idea that Jesus, who had come back even from death, was now leaving for heaven, leaving his disciples behind. But he would not leave them alone. He would not leave them distraught. He would send them a comforter, his Holy Spirit, and they were not distraught, but instead they returned to Jerusalem with great joy. At times, 
it may seem like Christ has left us alone too. And even though he has ascended and rules on high, the way he rules might not be what we expect. Today we experience an unseen killer in the coronavirus, taking the lives of loved ones and affecting the everyday life of us all. And we hear the words, nothing will be the same again. Everyday life doesn't stop for a virus though, and perhaps the virus exacerbates the situations in our lives too. We see conflicts in our family, we watch our health decline and feel too afraid to do anything. And we see our loved ones taken from us. We may feel abandoned by the one who promised he would care for our daily needs. And even when we turn to him in prayer, it can seem like our complaints and requests fall on deaf ears, as if God has left the party. I must admit my heart aches when I hear the rising toll of those who have died from coronavirus. Not just a number and a life. And I remember those feelings you get when you feel abandoned by God. I've struggled with those feelings in my life. So how can the disciples be so joyful when Jesus leaves them? Well, I think they found, they found joy in his promises. And we too can find the same joy. His promises are for us too. God is there and for us. And when we didn't want to let him near, he's persistent. The disciples' joy was founded in the words of the angels and the promise of Christ's return. For in the same way you saw him go, he will return. We too will find joy in the promises of his return. Do not take away the pain. But we can look forward to the last day, to the fulfilment of all things, and to seeing Christ with our own eyes, face to face. And we know that his returning glory will be the day of victory over all sin, death, and all things evil in our world. The times and hours are not ours to know, but what is ours to know is the promise. Their joy was found in the promise that Christ would send them a gift a comforter, a counsellor, his Holy Spirit. We saw his promise fulfilled in a, a powerful way on Pentecost, which is celebrated not this Sunday, but next week. But the day of Pentecost wasn't the only time the Spirit ever worked for God's people. We too know the work of the Spirit who has called us to faith by the Gospel and enlightens us with his gifts, who strengthens our faith and guides us in the paths of righteousness. The promise of the Spirit is for us too. And though not mentioned in the Ascension readings, some of Jesus' last words to them are found in Matthew 28, where he promises, I will be with you always to the end of the age. And so by his spirit and in his words, he was and he is. He is with us. The promise of his presence gives us joy when we meet it with him. And Jesus' promised presence gives us joy and his body and his blood are given for the forgiveness of our sins. And although we might not be able to receive uh, that body and blood physically, spiritually, we know that it is love given for us. The promise of his return, the promise of his spirit, the promise of his presence. These promises make his departure not only bearable, but also joyful for the disciples and for us. Yet his ascension comes not only with promise, but also with purpose. He ascends to heaven in order to reclaim his throne there. And as with everything he does, he does it for us. Jesus takes back his divine majesty and authority. He sits at the right hand of the Father, far above all other authorities. And there he rules in power, and he rules in power for us. Jesus Christ, true God, and still true man, soul and resurrected body together, now reigning in heaven. And just as we will follow him through death to life again, 
so too will we follow him to reign in heaven. We will receive the crown of life. Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ has ascended. Not a cause for sadness, but a reason for joy. Not so much as a, a goodbye as a see you later. For he promises his return, his spirit and his presence, and he rules there in heaven for us, his people, preparing a place for us. And for those families who have lost loved ones, well, their only hope is in Christ, that one day they too will be at one with him. Their hope is not so much a goodbye as a see you later. It's been a, a tough few weeks, but his comforter is there for us all. And my prayer is for those who are trying to come to terms with what they now face themselves with. Christ is the light that banishes the darkness. God doesn't abandon us. He doesn't fling us into darkness. He is there in the tears and the pain and the suffering in the coronavirus. And he's there beaming out love, beaming out hope, beaming out comfort. Let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. We now come to our time of intercession prayer. Let us pray. As we come to prayer, firstly, we give thanks we can be united together through modern technology. That although we are two or three gathered together, we know that we are part of a great crowd. We give thanks for those who are able to do this and rejoice with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world, that they all will be willing to work together to find a way forward to solve this modern crisis. Where money is being put into arms, it will be put into medicine and hospitals for the good of all. We pray that people will be willing to observe the directions of the government, rather than saying we do not need to, so that all can be kept safe. We pray for all leader, no matter in what situation, that they will work together for the good of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those working in hospitals, care home, hospices, and at home, often in very difficult situations. We give thanks for those who bring warmth and love to those in need. We also give thanks for those working within the community to see food and meals are getting to those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We gather these prayers before you as we say together, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We now come to the sharing of the peace. I invite you, if you'd like to and are able, to share the peace with one, each other, one another in the comments section on this channel. Um, if you're not able to do that, please do just consider us sharing the peace with you, perhaps with a wave. God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us and as a pledge of what is to come, has given us the spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. The peace of the risen and ascended Christ be always with you and also with you. So we share with one another a sign of that peace. Peace be with you all. God's peace be with you. 
We now have uh, an extra treat for our service today. We have an anthem which is brought to us by the choir of St. Aidan's um, in an arrangement of King of Kings, uh, written and prepared for by, by their head of music, uh, Mark Pallant. King of Kings, 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 King of Kings. Holy Spirit, you keep the church in unity and truth. As we celebrate this communion together, may we be one with Christ in faith and hope and love. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is our great High Priest, who has entered once for all into the heavenly sanctuary, evermore to pour upon your church the grace and comfort of your Holy Spirit. He is the one who is gone before us, who calls us to be united in prayer, as were his disciples in the upper room, while they awaited his promised gift, the life-giving spirit of Pentecost. Therefore, all creation yearns with eager longing, as angels and archangels sing the endless hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine, may be to us the body and blood of your, our Lord Jesus Christ. 
who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share one bread and one cup, so that we in all the company of the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Lord, our hearts hunger for you. Give us this bread always. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Give thanks for the saving death and resurrection of Jesus and ask him to be with you now. We say together, thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O oh, most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, 
May I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Lord, in these days of mercy, make us quiet and prayerful. In these days of challenge, make us stronger in you. In these days of emptiness, take possession of us. In these days of waiting, open our hearts to the mystery of your cross. We say together, Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for you. Give us the will to be the servant of others, as you were the servant of all, and gave up your life and died for us, but are alive and reign, now and forever. Amen. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and all the peoples of this world now and evermore. Amen. So we sing our final hymn. All heaven declares. Christ has gone up on high. Alleluia. Thank you for being a part of our communion service today. It's wonderful to be gathered as the communities of Panel and Beckwithshaw and much further afield. It really is wonderful to be gathered in this way. Next week we will have another service at 10am on Sunday morning for Pentecost, our wonderful day of celebrating the church's birthday. In the morning at 10am, there will be a Taze service specially prepared for us 
for that Pentecost celebration. In the afternoon at 4pm, we'll be having a Pentecost birthday bash, something specifically designed for our families of our two churches um, to celebrate that day with a bit of a birthday party. Uh, the details of that are available via our midweek message. Um, and we'll be doing that on Zoom. So if you haven't yet looked at the video that's on this channel about that, do please do so. Find out the details and get ready to come to that party. It's been wonderful to be with you. May I send my, my blessings and God's blessings for the week ahead to you.